start pretty soon. I'm just waiting for everyone to get here.
Misa really likes Corsilla Bachel. Ah, how are you guys doing, class? Um, incidentally, if you want to talk, I muted everyone. If you want to talk, you just basically press spacebar to engage talkback. So uh, that's basically a way to do it. That way, we, we're not hearing any like extraneous background noise. I would ask that you turn on video if you have it, just so that uh, it's more engaging. It's much more engaging for me to see video than to see a blank screen with your name. Um, yeah, OK, cool. Yeah, now I feel like we're all hanging out. This is pretty cool. It's pretty quiet because I muted everyone. But again, if you if you want to say something, just hold down space bar. It'll take like half a second to register, and then uh, you'll be you'll be good to go. So I'm just randomly looking at, at some students here. Um, so I guess I will. Let's see. Who is this? Funny when I see faces, it doesn't say names. It's too bad. Uh, oh, I guess okay. This is how I found out. Find out. Okay, Annie, can you hear me? Can you can you press spacebar and say something? Uh, yeah. Hi. Okay, great. Works out well. Um, let's try it with. This is great. I can actually hover over your, your pictures and see your name. Andrej, I know I, I know your last name is Prokolab, I think, but. Uh, uh, yes. OK, great. Uh, let's try another one. Uh, sorry, I have to like open the chat to see your name. Oh, Ella Stimson, can you <laughs> say something? Hello. OK, great. Um, Incidentally, I guess you can't see what I'm seeing, but I'll share a screenshot so you can actually see. Give me one moment. We could see your screen. You could see my screen, but the issue is you can't see the Zoom client when it's when it's run. Like it, it hides the Zoom client. So for example, I'll just show you something really quickly. Uh, like right now, I'm hovering over some settings in the Zoom client. But what I could do is I could just show you a screenshot of what I was seeing. Like, for example, I don't think you can see this. But if you can't find audio, like there's a little like arrow right here. Oh, can, you can't. Oh, yeah, you can see my screen now. There's this little arrow that you click right next to mute. And then you basically select uh, whatever audio interface you want as your output and whatever microphone you want as your input. You could also go to audio settings. I guess I'll show you what that looks like. This is pretty meta, I'm showing pictures of pictures. Um, let's see. I go to audio settings. You can't see what I'm looking at right now, but you will in one sec. Uh, all right. Yeah, if you go to audio settings, uh, in the preferences, you could basically test your speaker, you could test your microphone, you could you could do all that fun stuff. And uh, again, yeah, if you, if you press space, you can mute yourself, unmute yourself, and um, it's all good and dandy. So yeah, I really want to make sure that if you're trying to say something to me, that you can actually say something to me, and it's not, I'm not ignoring you deliberately. Um, it's pretty quiet in here, so actually I do appreciate when you say something relevant. Uh, but keep it salient, keep it to the point. I know, uh, actually, yeah, I, I, I will stick to that rule. And uh, yeah, so if anyone has any questions, please talk back now. Someone, please say something. 
Are we going to have a test online? Ah, great question. I guess I will start showing you the syllabus. Okay. So the answer to your question is everything will be open note, take home, open book. And it'll be sort, sort of similar to how things were done for the final last semester, uh, last quarter, I should say. Uh, so yeah, don't feel any uh, pressure to just memorize everything. I mean, it, it's great actually, I, I recommend you, you actually learn everything so rigorously that you don't have to refer to the class notes, but for the sake of examinations and homework, um, you could refer to any notes, for instance, the one note uh, for answers, and you won't get penalized. How is the performance aspect of this class going to work? Ah, okay. So the performance aspect of this class is going to work like this. Um, some of it's still being determined, but what I'm thinking is that it's basically one-on-one -on -one meetings with your TA. So we're, we're still going to have three meetings, but it's going to be singing instead of piano. And um, it'll test you on certain concepts, uh, scales, uh, whatever, whatever we're working on at the time, uh, either singing an exercise or singing a specific interval. You're going to be talking to your TAs uh, during, it, it's basically like you're having your scheduled Zoom meeting with your, with your TA and you just, they admit you to the room or the Zoom room at a certain time. Like there's a, there's a function in Zoom where there's a waiting room. So you can all like be in, in the, the room at the same time. So you won't, you won't have to worry about other people kind of like listening to you. It'll still be private. And uh, it, it's, it's a great way to gauge kind of feedback one-on-one. -on -one. So we're still gonna keep that aspect, but we're not gonna be able to do piano because understandably some people don't have pianos. So that's too bad. Um, I know some of you guys are probably rejoicing, but it's uh, piano is so cool. I mean, obviously it's my, it's my first instrument, so I love it so much, but you know, singing, uh, these things are cross applicable. Like you can learn piano vicariously through singing and you can learn singing vicariously through piano. It's just, a, it's, it's a matter of putting in the reps and uh, music is very transferable. The knowledge you learn is very transferable. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. It's a great, these are great questions, guys. Really great questions. Uh, um, oh my bad. I have a question. Um, as far as homework goes, do we need to have access to a printer? Like, is it going to be something we have to print out and take a picture of? Uh, um, I, yes, actually. Um, the, well, actually, this is. I'll give you two options. One option. I. It's highly preferable that you print it, but I understand in the current climate that you might not have access to a printer. If yeah. you don't have access to a printer, it's more of a pain to do this but like actually writing out the answers on staff paper, um, which is actually like amazing for your, uh, your skills. But if you're not familiar there, uh, well, I guess you have to have staff paper. If you, if you don't have that, then you have to print that. And if you're going to print that, you might as well just print the homework. But if you don't have staff paper, uh, do you have staff paper tape? I have a little bit, probably not enough for all our homework assignments. Uh, well, just go print stuff out at the library, and I'm pretty sure the library is closed. Okay, well, um, let's see. I'm sure everyone's just, it's the stuff selling out fast right now, given coronavirus. Um, everyone's trying to get their staff paper. Um, yeah, I guess this is free prime delivery. You can get some of this. Okay. Uh, uh, but I wonder, I mean, hmm, that is like, it is more work. I'm not going to lie to you to have to like transfer all that stuff, but it's, it's going to, if I do recall though, I think you did hand write one of your, uh, well, you, I mean, you hand wrote your performance quiz, if I recall correctly. Um, you wrote out the chords. So it's a good exercise. Oh, someone's annotating on screen. I have an ability to turn that off, but I forget. I don't know how yet, but, but that was a very productive annotation. So I appreciate that. Um, whoever did that. Okay, I'm great. sorry. I have a question. Sure. Like, is it possible to provide the original file so that we can just type it on the file? Oh yeah. Uh, on one note, I always give you that option. Um, I deleted all the homeworks now, but basically all you have to do is right click and then click save as PDF. And it's always, it's always been that way. Um, are you new to the class? 
I mean, like, do we have, uh, can we have the original, original file so, so that we can use the software to d directly type the notes on the, on the documents? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can totally do that. Um, oh, that's way better. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Actually, that's awesome. So, for instance, I'll open Sibelius and show you. Great question. Sorry, I doubted your question. It was actually an excellent question. Um, if I go to one series, sorry, my mouse is being a little slow right now. If I go to one series and I go to homework, um, and I go to like homework five, for instance, and I open up homework five from the one B class, you could actually type everything in directly, um, into the document. Uh, incidentally, I actually finally cracked the software. So not seeing that error message anymore. Um, there are softwares that you can actually annotate, uh, directly onto a PDF, um, like this software which I could provide to you um, on a Google Drive link or something for the sake of education during this crisis. Um, but yeah, if, if that's something that you prefer doing as well, there are several softwares free and not so free that you could annotate directly onto a software. Um, so uh, with that being said, um, yeah, I would just have to export this as a music XML file and then uh, yeah, if you're interested in, in learning how to get certain software, I can't I can't give you a crack software because I'm on I'm on video right now. But uh, if you're looking for software to help you with this, just just send me an email and I can see what I can do. Uh, legal software. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird being on video, guys. I'm, I'm I got the heebie-jeebies just now. Uh, strange. Uh, Okay, I guess back to the syllabus we go. Okay. Oh gosh, this stuff is so boring. Uh, all right, uh, course overview. Okay, I think I think you guys understand this. I honestly, this is exactly the way it was since one A and one B. I, I just want you to become better musicians. I want you to apply this in real life. Uh, you can't learn music in a vacuum. You have to actually put it to the test. So practice this stuff. Practice your composition, practice your listening, apply all this stuff to your listening um, in, in your day-to-day -day lives. Great. Required materials. Uh, you will not be receiving handouts in class, which will be referred. <laughs> um, yes. So anyway, um, every, you will be receiving handouts, actually, um, just through OneNote, just like the way it was before. If you're not familiar or you're new to this class, I have a Basically, I have this like class notebook called OneNote. I've organized it a little bit more since last time, and I've created subfolders of things because it was getting a little out of hand. Um, it's searchable. It's uh, I actually recommend getting the dedicated application for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android. So, for instance, download um, no download OneNote. Uh, it makes the experience a little bit nicer and. Um, it also, I think some of you guys were having difficulty with the audio examples for the homework. Uh, if you were just viewing this on OneNote, I don't think you would have any problems accessing the audio examples. So it's it's good for that um, as well. Yeah, you can get it for pretty much, look at all these, look at all these platforms, it's amazing. So it's free, it's awesome. Uh, this is where class notes will be. Uh, Theta Music, we basically have uh, a website called Theta Music and um, there is a component to this class. There will be listening for all of uh, for all of the homeworks. So as a result, you're going to have to practice your ear training. And since it's really difficult, if not impossible, for me to gauge your hearing or your listening during a lecture where there's a bunch of latency between machines and all all kinds of technical hurdles, it's that much more imperative that you take advantage of this website, Data Music, to practice this. It's amazing. You get instant feedback on um, a lot of um, a lot of a variety of ear training topics. So, for instance, if I go to ThetaMusic.com, I actually have to um, change account settings so that certain people have access. I have to talk to the web administrator. I'm just going to tell them to do it. But for instance, there's going to be dictation. I'm going to probably have dictation on a weekly basis on your homework, um, or 
things like that, where I have audio examples and you have to kind of figure out um, what is being played. A great way to practice this stuff is using things like these games. Um, so if I go to Melody and I go to like Parrot Phrases, let's see if the audio actually works. So give me a thumbs up if the audio is actually working. Um, Okay, so a game like this, for instance, you know, do is da da, so it'd be one, two, right? So this is just to kind of demonstrate that you could use a website like this to practice your ear training um, in a variety of ways, in which which will actually go more in depth, and I'll explain to you. But for the time being, just know that it exists. Um, it is on the OneNote under Course Docs, so. In case, you know, I guess I should explain to you how the OneNote works, which you guys all got a link to. I've segregated it into three different uh, main things, one of them being theory, the other one being activities, and the third one being course documents. So in theory, we basically have like all the handouts that I basically talk about in terms of certain uh, things and things to come. It's like flipped classroom approach in the sense that you basically have the textbook ahead of time and we're just going to go through exercises and it's your prerogative to sort of learn. But, um, oh, look at that. Wow. I could do you one better, sir. Uh, because this ac application is actually dedicated uh, to drawing, I can actually uh, do some pretty cool stuff. Um, but anyway, activities basically is where our piano, ooh, rest in peace. But not to say that it is rest in peace. I know a lot of you guys have keyboards at home. You could practice this stuff. Singing, it's good to practice these exercises. In fact, when you have performance quizzes, you're going to actually have to know these things um, and refer to these exercises when you're actually completing the performance quizzes. Um, Course documents, basically your homeworks will go here, your midterm review, different websites like, ah, which is the reason I brought this up in the first place, Theta Music, and uh, the syllabus, which is uh, currently being broadcast to you right now, and it'll be put on the OneNote in a moment. Uh, I guess I should go to the top really quickly, since we have our wonderful TAs over here. Oh, you know what? This is fun. I'm gonna ask someone to start their video. Please start your video. If your video is not being broadcast, it gives me more of a sense of, uh, of you know, a class. Uh, so um, anyway, how about we do this really quickly? I'm going to stop sharing. And I will actually, I'm not going to stop sharing yet. First, I'm just going to announce the four TAs. And our first TA is Mari Kawamura. And she's teaching from Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 to 9.50 via Zoom. And if you're not familiar with the Zoom client, uh, that's impossible because we're on it right now. So I got you. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to let Mari share. And sorry to put you on the spot, Mari. You can just say a couple of words uh, just to your section in, in case, like, you know, if you're going to send an email or, or, or whatnot. Incidentally, I should tell all the TAs right now, you do have Canvas access as of yesterday. So um, you'll be able to email your, your sections. But let me stop sharing, and then I'll let Mari share. Z of the Zoom. So, oh. yeah. Huh? Oh, sorry, Mari. Can you click? Oh, I guess. Um, can you sh share? Or, or, sorry, I guess I guess everyone, I guess Mari's just, Mari can talk. Sorry, I, I, you were muted. So, I, I just unmuted you. Okay. Hello? Hello, we can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yes, so I'm looking forward to seeing you. The class is starting tomorrow uh, at 9 a.m. I will be sending you, uh, for those of you who are in my section, I will email you uh, this afternoon by Davis uh, with the link and an ID to that Zoom meeting. So yeah, see you soon. Great, all right. Okay, awesome. Um, I guess since people are just going to see video anyway, I guess I can actually, um, okay, make, let's, let's look at the next person. Uh, the next TA 
is Zach. So Zach, I'm going to unmute you. Um, I actually can't hear you. Uh, oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, my name is Zach. Um, I am a second year PhD composition student here uh, from my living room. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this whole Zoom thing is very awkward. So bear with me for the first session. We're going to try to figure this out. I'll do my best to do my homework ahead of time so we, things go as smoothly as possible. But um, I'm looking forward to working with those of you who are my students. And uh, tomorrow's going to be 10 to 10.50. Uh, it's Mondays and Wednesdays, 10 to 10.50. So I'll, yeah, I'll send an email out as well later on today once I've gotten my, my ducks in the row uh, so we can just make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, looking forward to working with you guys. Thank you, Zach. Our next TA is Rebecca. And um, I guess Rebecca, I, I'll unmute you. I, I realized that once I mute someone, they can't unmute themselves unless they press spacebar. So I will unmute you. Oh, sorry, you were actually um, unmuted. I guess you could unmute yourself. Okay, great. Okay, hi guys. Um, I am taking Wednesdays and Fridays, 11 to 11.50. And I re recognize some of your faces from last quarter, but I don't know that all of you are back in, in my sections. Um, like Zach, you know, Zoom is a, is a little bit awkward. So we'll just learn together how to do it. Um, uh, I don't have anything specific to tell you. I'll send you the link today for the uh, for the Zoom for our section. I've already made all the repairing events for the quarter. Um, and email me if you have questions. And also tomorrow we can talk about the best way to do office hours, um, perhaps by appointment. We can talk more about it. Um, okay, great. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Rebecca. Okay, last but not least, Miguel Zazueta. And Miguel, let me unmute you unless you've, or oh, wait, wait, you know what? Actually, I see Miguel. Great. I will unmute you. And uh, Miguel, you have the floor. Hey, guys. Hey, everyone. I recognize a lot of you. Um, I'm very happy to be here again. And um, we'll find different ways to work. I hope that we will make it uh, the best of these new opportunities. They, let's say it that way. <laughs> and, um, well, we'll meet, uh, my section will meet tomorrow, Wednesdays and Fridays from 12 to 8. I'm going to uh, email you um, so, so you can access the, the class. Uh, I'm email maybe uh, this afternoon the, the link for you. And also have a little space so you know I have to do a little movement stuff in my classes. So we, we will keep on doing that. So have a little space with you and the share. Uh, so you can sit down also, uh, and that's it. Well, let's hope we'll have uh, tons of <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Great. All right, this is a, a strange uh, request from all of you, but I, I don't know what this is going to do. It's just a curiosity. Everyone give, give a round of applause to the TAs while holding down Spacebar. Okay. All right. Great. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Virtual applause. Um, okay. Wonderful. So I guess I'll continue on with the, the syllabus. Um, I got a little sidetracked. I realized I did that out of order. So where was I? Theta music. Um, yeah. I think I basically told you these goals. We want to become better listeners. We want to become better singers. We want to become more fluent in a wide range of terminology and vocabulary. And we want to become fluent readers and writers of musical notation. Great. We want to develop a fluency with the solfege system. And we want to acquire elementary keyboard skills. Um, we do want to. But uh, unfortunately, the degree to which we can do this is limited by this virtual situation. OK, so great breakdown. I know you guys were waiting for this. Um, let me see what's going on in the chat. Oh, OK, OK. No problem. See you later. All right. Great breakdown. Attendance and ensemble participation uh, is 25%. Okay. So you have to go, you have to get here. Uh, you have to show up. I can, it's actually extremely easy for me to see statistics of whether you're here or not. I just have to look on my little portal. And actually I found out I can literally see how many minutes you were here. I can see like how much you were engaging. I can see all kinds of stuff. 
Um, so you have to be here. The homework is 30% of the grade. Listening and performance is 15% of the grade. Uh, midterm is 15% and the final exam is 15%. Okay, what do you do if you have unstable internet? Okay, here is um, actually, I think, uh, Leilani, can you actually, um, can, we, can you actually chime in? Uh, because I think you were the one who asked that question. That's a great question. Leilani, which uh, internet service provider do you have? Uh, are you pressing spacebar? Can you do AT it again? AT&T. AT&T. Okay, I know that Cox is actually doing a free upgrade for internet. They're like improving speeds, upgrading speeds for free until for the next like three months. So I would actually, I mean, I would contact your internet service provider and they're like kind of obligated to come and fix things um, if things aren't working. Um, I always call them and I always complain to them and they, they are obligated to give you a new router or new uh, modem. They just basically, I've always found that they do that for free. So if you're having unstable internet, I would, cont I've, I've actually recommended this to two of my professors and they've like, Cox has come over and they've come over and fixed their problems and their internet's actually been great. So I would recommend that. If that's not an option, um, I really don't have any other great advice. But so far, it looks like your internet seems to be hanging on. Um, so fingers crossed, but I would just, I would call your internet service provider. There's also this website called, um, it's a fun website in case you want to go check it out. It's called, I think it's called speedtest.net. And you can check your internet speed. And you can kind of get, I think you can get averages or you can get a sense for how good your internet is compared to other people's internet. And if it's really slow, then you know something's wrong. Like if it's in like the one gig megabits per second, like that's what my professor's email internet was. I would, I called, I told him to call his internet service provider and they came over and they fixed it and now it's like this fast. So they will, like they just don't want to do their, like the companies, those big cable companies, sometimes they don't want to like serve their customers. So you have to like be really like adamant and say, no, I want my cable, I want my internet. And especially right now, it's like imperative that you have it. So. I would uh, contact them. That's a great question. Um, okay, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to just chime in. Uh, you don't have to go to the chat um, if you don't want, um, just, just chime in. What about different time zones? Like uh, Different time zones, uh, I will, uh, what time zone are you in? I mean, this doesn't really apply to me. I'm just asking because I know that I, I just been in other classes that usually require attendance, but they had to change their policy because, you know, some students would have to wake up super early, like, you know, like right. if you... Well, I think, yeah, if you're in Hawaii, um, that's a problem. Um, well, unless you're an early riser. Um, but if, yeah, if you're across the world, I am recording all the lectures. But I guess on a case by case basis, like I, I need, I need, uh, I need you to tell me if that's your situation and we'll actually gauge it on a person by person basis. And then I'll be able to know statistics wise, why you were or weren't in class. And it's also easy for me to gauge things like this based on other criteria, like grading, honestly, is a subjective endeavor. Incidentally, if you, well, I guess I'll say, yeah, it's, it, there's, there's some subjectivity. I mean, I'm a human being. So I look at the I look at the average of everything that I see. I look at all kinds of criteria when, when looking at a grade. And one of the criteria that I go off of is, well, how communicative is the student? Um, are they sending lots of emails? Are they, uh, do they seem concerned? Are they missing lecture all the time, but they're not like providing me any reason? Well, just kind of be overly communicative. And I'll try to reciprocate, although oftentimes emails for me go by the wayside. I don't mean for this to happen. It's just emails. Just I get so many emails that if that does happen, like don't feel like it's you know rude to just send me another email. Just just send me more emails and be like, why haven't you responded to my email? And I'll say I'm sorry, I forgot to respond to your email. Um, so just be in touch. If just be the key. The key to life is communication. So anyway, great. So yeah, this is the grade breakdown. Uh, attendance and participation is 25%. Homework is 30. Performance evaluation is 15, et cetera, all this stuff. Ah, we changed the no laptops policy to a yes. 
Yes, laptops policy. It's pretty exciting, right? So you obviously you need a laptop or an equivalent device. And I love technology, honestly. Um, I don't like it when it's deterring. Like I don't like it when someone's in class and they're obviously not doing something related to music. But if they're like on their music software and they're like typing in notes, I'm like, that's awesome. Like it's liberating. In fact, technology has been so kind to me. So I really am one of those people that dislikes their handwriting, their penmanship, uh, handwritten penmanship for music. So music theory, I mean, sorry, uh, um, music software has liberated me in that regard. And it's made, it's made me feel much more comfortable to write things down. And uh, I don't have to like get distracted by how, you know, disgusting my penmanship is. So anyway, academic integrity, obviously. Um, so in terms of academic integrity, um, yeah, um, there, this, is, this is a little bit of a problem. Um, like, I guess like, try not to, like I'm asking, it's kind of, in some ways it's difficult to collaborate because you're all in a quarantine. Um, but in some other ways, you might actually find a way to do so. I'm asking that you don't collaborate um, unless like it's like a specific question. The reason is you're not going to really learn if you're just at, relying on someone else for the answer. And if the TA spots something like that, they will get in contact with you. I, you know, academic integrity violations have like skyrocketed. Like, I think I got an email that like there were like 600 new cases at UCSD since the quarantine situation went into place. Because, you know, obviously if we're working from home, it's like, it's, you know, what's stopping someone from like turning in the same homework as their neighbor? Well, I guess academic integrity, well, I'll try to zoom in for emphasis, but it's not working. Um, yeah, you know, have some academic integrity, guys. Come on, I believe in you. Just uh, just do the right thing and um, work on your on your homework. This is ultimately for your own edification. This is for you to become better musicians. Music is one of those like rare subjects. Well, I shouldn't say that. Music is like all interesting subjects. Music is gratifying and fun. So the only way to get better at it is through practice. So you're not you're doing a disservice to yourself if you're if you're cheating. So just do the right thing, do the work, and you'll get better. And that's the goal. Late homework will not be accepted. Um, you must submit assignments the day they're due, but the sh it happens clause. Okay. I should tell you about homework submissions. For those of you who have taken my 1B class, the final, <coughs> excuse me, the final exam was submitted on Canvas. That's the way it's going to be for homework. So what's going to happen is homework will be posted on OneNote. Like, just like everything, um, like all the assignments, all the course documents will be posted on, um, on OneNote. You'll be able to access it right here. Uh, in fact, I'll try to even put a link to the specific place where you submit it on Canvas. I will give you more details on this, but I really prefer that you submit everything as one PDF because that renders it in the browser as a very easy way to grade it. Like if you submit it as a PDF, I can, you can just literally annotate on the PDF. Whereas if you submit it as an image, it makes it such, or a series of images even worse, it makes it such that we can't actually annotate in the browser and we have to download your files. And then we have to send like multiple files back to your email. It's just a huge pain. So there are so many apps that allow you to uh, scan things. This is a cross-platform app that I recommend, Genius Scan. It's, it's genius. It's a, it's a scanner in your pocket. You just take, basically take a picture and uh, it, uh, in case you're printing the homework, this is, this is what I recommend to actually scan your homework as one document that you can subsequently scan and upload to Canvas. If you're just actually typing up your homework, which I can provide you music XML files for these homework assignments, all you have to do is you just have to, depending on your software, there's a pretty simple, there's an, always an option just to export as a PDF and then you could export it as a PDF. Of course, if you go down this option, it's predicated on, on improving your ability to use music software, notation software, which actually I should say is going to be to some degree part of this class. And I'll tell you why. I was able to get hooked up with this music notation software called flat.io. And I know some of the 1B students actually um, use this to submit their motets. 
sorry, not their motets. I'm thinking about another class. None of you guys submitted motets. But these folks in 405B submitted motets. So I guess I can show you a motet as an example. So this student submitted a motet. Well, I'll show you a doodle pad. So here's one way I envision you working in class. And this is, I guess, up to your TAs to enforce this to whatever prerogative they want. But one advantage I see of a website like this, which I will explain access to at a later time, is that if I open up a student's like doodle pad, they can like practice theory and I could see their changes in real time. So they can be like, oh, it's like, is this a, is this a second inversion triad? Obviously this isn't, this is something totally different, but um, the teacher could be like, write down a second inversion triad and then you could write down a second inversion triad and then they can just check your work um, without sharing your screen and doing all this difficult stuff. The advantage to this system is that it's all here and that I can just view everyone's work or your TA can view everyone's work. It's very easy and you don't have to switch screens back and forth. Um, um, so we might actually do some of this in our lecture actually. So for instance, I might actually just be like, hey, everyone write out um, like a triad or something. Let's see you practice doing this in class. Um, so actually I will ask you to do that. <laughs> so for instance, you might think that's really difficult to do. It's really not so bad. And I can actually give you a little primer on that when we actually get to it. Um, the primer on that is really, really simple. Um, I guess I'll give you a preliminary primer. It's not in this notebook, but um, if you want to use keyboard shortcuts, you could just literally type in the letters as notes. You could press this button for a sharp, this key for a flat, and you basically press these buttons for the corresponding duration. And it's really simple. It's fun. Um, and there's something great about technology from the standpoint that it actually motivates you to, um, to actually go the, the distance and, and write out music and you're actually composing and, and you're making arrangements and you're making arrangements that you're ready to like give to someone because they're so professionally typed up and all this stuff. So it's really like awesome to get familiar with software like this. So um, it's really not that difficult. I might just be like, hey, write a C major triad. And it's a simple, sorry Griffin, I'm just gonna overwrite this. Well, that's not a C major triad. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, my keyboard shortcuts are all different, sorry. Griffin, I apologize for deleting your work. Um, okay. C, pull down shift. C major triad. I had to go back and forth, add notes, and that's how I made a chord. But anyway, getting ahead of myself here. Let me go back to our notebook. Pretty cool though, I think. I'm excited by technology. Um, let's see, there's something in the chat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out what's in the chat really quickly. Okay. Hmm. Ah, Tate, do we have homework starting this week or next week? Sorry to get, okay. We are going to have homework starting this week. Um, so I'm gonna give you a homework assignment on Thursday and it's gonna be due next Wednesday. Uh, oh, Brosnan Elrod raised his hand. Brosnan, what's up? Brosnan, did you uh, intentionally raise your hand? Uh, Brosnan, is your audio, oh, sorry, are you pressing spacebar to mute yourself, unmute, do you have to press spacebar to unmute yourself? Like this? Yeah, that's how you do it. Okay, uh, dang it, I forgot my question, I'm sorry, I'll get back to you. Great question, uh, no, okay, <laughs> well, you know, get back to me when you can. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to butcher your name, I don't mean to, uh, oh yeah, Leilani just answered the question. The syllabus will be on one note later, thank you, Leilani. Okay, great. OSD accommodations. Um, I don't know how this is going to work, to be honest, but just email the department that is 
responsible for this and we can take care of this virtually. No problem. I'm responding to the chat. You, you as well. I'm sorry, I pronounced that incorrectly. Yes, CAPS. I know this can be a trying time, difficult psychologically. Um, so CAPS is available. To what extent, I'm not exactly sure, but take advantage. Trident Food Pantry might be able to still provide food. Last time I checked the website, they did say they're providing food through the spring quarter, but I don't know how that's going to work when we're on a school-wide quarantine. Okay. Sorry, that was a lot of housekeeping, but we're making decent time. So today, sorry, I'm getting really hungry. Uh, all I have on my desk are like vegan dog treats, which they're totally vegan and safe, so I guess I could eat them. But, uh, no. <laughs> um, let's see. Mmm, dog food. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I will. I shouldn't say this, but I actually, yeah. Well, guys, just, just, please give me ten seconds, okay? I'm like, lit, I'm just gonna grab something really quickly. I'll be right. Back. Ten second break. See, the problem with online classes is I can really push my wake up time to like literally before class. So I haven't eaten breakfast. So I apologize. I'm just going to like, I'll, I won't do this next time, hopefully, but I'm like so hungry right now. I just have to take a bite of that banana. So I apologize. Anyway, um, let's check out what's in the chat. Oh yeah. Big zoom energy. Exactly. Oh, Gabriel. Thank you, man. Good morning, Kayla. Cool. Everyone's doing all right. Okay. Okay. So we're going to review open position trot chords and we're going to look at some exotic scales and we're going to talk about the blues. Next week, I actually, uh, I want to change this order. I actually originally talk, was going to talk about ninth, 11th and 13th chords like week eight, but I think I'm actually going to talk about it next week because I think it'll be an interesting thing to talk about throughout the quarter. We're going to talk about phrases different phrase structures, antecedent consequence, question, answer, double periods, periods, all kinds of stuff. We're going to continue talking about embellishing tones. Um, I talked about non-core tones. See, there's lots of confusion about this particular terminology. Um, embellishing tones are basically notes that are melodic in nature where the melody note doesn't match the chord at that particular time. So there's all kinds of different melody notes that you can types of embellishing tones. We've talked about passing tones and neighbor tones, but there's actually a whole discussion that we can have on this. One of the ones that I'm really excited about is secondary dominance. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome subject. And uh, I think you're gonna really enjoy this. Oh, guys, I noticed some of you guys don't have your video on. Could you please turn on your video? It makes class a little more engaging. I think some of you uh, do not have your video on, so. Please uh, turn on your video. I want to see your faces. Um, gives me a better perspective. Uh, let's see what's in the chat. Okay, yeah. If you have, if you literally have no webcam, that's okay. But if you do have a webcam, just please. I'm not. I, it, it really just helps me. I doubt that all these people don't have webcams. Uh, please. In fact, I think that if I ask, uh, well, sorry. This is. They did suggest actually, sorry to go back and forth with all this technology stuff, but I was actually recommended that on the first day of class, I do talk about technology and I don't talk about the syllabus. So we're actually covering more ground than we would have normally covered um, based on the recommendations. So it's good to talk about the technology because it's so drastically different. Um, ah, okay, I saw someone who does have a webcam. I can actually see who actually does have a webcam. And I'm asking people to start their videos. Um, yeah, so please, I see you guys. I don't want to call you out in front of the class, but I will. I will soon enough. So take your time, but start your videos. I'm telling you. Okay. Okay, great. All right. Um, 
Okay, secondary dominance, I'm really excited about telling you about these chords. Uh, secondary diminished chords, I'm also really excited about those. Modulation, cool stuff. Modes, we're gonna talk about that as well. Oh, look, Mari's back, I thought, she, oh, Mari was always here. Someone else had to leave, okay, great. Um, awesome, it just makes me happy to see everyone here. Um, so, uh, I guess what we can talk about is this. We can go back to a review. We can actually get down to the brass tacks and I can give you an example of something that you might be expected to know. So for instance, if I hypothetically, or quite literally, I guess in this case, I will give you a little chord and, ooh, that was in the wrong octave, but that's okay. It'll all work out. Okay, so I gave you this little chord, right? Now I give you this chord. Now this chord right here is in one of two different voicings. Sorry, this chat is so distracting. I keep seeing stuff. Um, cool. And um, yeah, it's in one of two voice voicings. It's either closed voicing um, or it's open voicing. Okay. Now in this particular case, oh, you know what? I can. Sorry, I'm still going to use technology for our sake, and I'm going to see if I can actually uh, take advantage of this raise hand feature. Um, so I'm actually going to lower Brosnan's hand. Sorry, Brosnan. Sorry. How many people, um, <laughs> how many people, oh, Zezong's got um, a thumbs up and I can't turn it off. Oh, I just muted him. Um, oh, thanks, Zay. Well, okay, cool. All right, <laughs> how many people think, okay, so if you, if you want to see how to, to give a thumbs up, go to manage participants. And then I think you can give a thumbs up. So let's see if this works. How many people think this is an open voice and chord? Give me a thumbs up if you think it is. Hey, Brosnan. Oh, no, but in the in the actual uh, manage participants thing. What chord are we looking at? Oh, uh, we're looking at this chord right here. Oh, whoops, I had it covered up. Sorry. No worries. I think I can actually tell some of you guys. That was Stephen Rossi, wasn't it? Yeah, what's up? Oh, cool. All right. I couldn't see your face, but I could, I could hear your name. Cool. Hear your voice. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, either people are getting the answer wrong or they don't know how to put thumbs up. So I'm hoping people just don't know how to. Okay, look at all those thumbs ups. So what I'm seeing on my end, I'll, I'll show you a little screenshot of what I'm seeing. It'll be extremely engaging, I'm sure, for you guys to see this, but... What I'm seeing, oh, whoops, press the wrong shortcut. I have to, again, do this stupid screenshot thing because it actually, it's very smart. The software actually hides the Zoom client. So you can't see the Zoom client when I'm, what I'm looking at, but this is basically what is being shown. And I'm basically seeing a bunch of um, thumbs ups. So Kayla, you got it right. Kim, you got it right. g I'm sorry, you got it wrong. Sorry to put you, sorry to tell, tell you. Or you just can't figure out how to put your thumbs up. Um, let's see. Who is having trouble with putting their thumbs up? Um, chat, chat in. Uh, use press spacebar to, to chat in or video audio in if you're having trouble. No one. Okay. Can everyone actually? Can I? Can I just ask everyone to put their thumbs up? Uh, you Ming just gave me a go faster. Oh, he gave me a thumbs up. Okay. Sorry, Yuming. I can't go faster because I want to explain this. Uh, I want to make sure we get it right. Unless that was accidental. Hoping that's accidental. But I, I, I oh, Stephen actually, is actually telling me to go slower. So I'm going to slow down. Um, uh, guys, it's basically here. I'll, I'll go back to the screenshot. You click. I, I didn't really do the greatest job explaining that. So I will do this. This is so funny. Oh, whoops, sorry, whoops. Ba, 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 ba. I have to be quick. Bam, there we go. Okay, so what I basically did was this. I opened, I'm gonna open this with preview. And what I did was this. I basically clicked the um, manage participants thingamajig right here, okay? And then after that, I could either say yes, no, go slower, go faster. And that's basically how you do the thumbs up or thumbs down. So you have to click Manage Participants. 
You go yes, no, and you go thumbs up or thumbs down. Okay, so everyone give me a thumbs up, basically by clicking yes. Wait. Oh, interesting. You can show your Zoom by going to Zoom settings, share, uh, screen, and show Zoom windows during screen share. Okay. Uh, go to Zoom settings, share. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Look at me thinking I was being all cutting edge. This is actually a better way to do it. Thank you, whoever said that. Um, let me do that. I'm probably going to turn that setting off afterwards because actually it's kind of cool to have it off. But uh, Zoom settings, share. Oh my gosh, this would have been so much easier than all of the other things that I was trying to do. Okay, great. So you now, now you can actually see my Zoom windows. Thumbs up if you can see my Zoom window. Or actually a literal, okay, great. All right, awesome. I'm gonna turn this off in a second. So I clicked manage participants and then I clicked yes. Okay. Straightforward, right? Everyone can see basically what I'm doing. Okay, the yeses are, okay, I got a no. Okay, that's, okay I got 14 yeses, 13. Come on, guys. 17. Let's blow this thing up, guys. Let's go viral with this. No, I shouldn't. I shouldn't use that word, guys. I'm sorry. All right. All right. Um, okay, this is great. Look at that. Why are some of these blue and some of these green? I don't know. But you got to express yourself. I know. Uh, if I may, the green ones are yeses, and the blue ones are actual thumbs up. They're two different things. Oh, okay. Where did you access the blue thumbs up? The more button. Oh, oh, oh yeah, this more, more button. button. Oh, okay, okay. So I guess use either yes, no, or yes, or it doesn't matter. I don't really care. Uh, one, one of the, one or the other. Express yourself. Great. Okay. So I guess uh, is there a way for me to like? Oh, clear all. So I just cleared everyone. Awesome. Fantastic. So now that I see this little feedback screen. Have this little window open if you can. And actually, at this point, I'm going to, everyone should hopefully followed what I just did. I'm going to go to Zoom settings. I'm going to check chat really quickly. Um, thank you, Tianyi. That was, that came in clutch. Automatic A for the class. Um, let me change my settings really quickly. Trust me, it's good that we're doing this the first day. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's a school recommendation. So, um, Okay, uh, I'm gonna go to share screen and then show Zoom Windows screen screen share. Okay, awesome, fantastic. Is it me or is my chat different from the chat he sees? Oh yeah, there's probably all kinds of crazy messages circulating right now. Um, private messages. Oh, I just oh I just I just for some reason I just was able to see all your private messages. Just kidding. <laughs> Give you a heart attack for a second probably. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know what you guys are saying, but hopefully it's good stuff um, in your private messages. Um, okay, back to business. So this is an open position triad right here. And the reason you know that is because if I give you this right here, these are, this is a snowman, also known as a, a closed voicing root position uh, version of the chord. Okay, really a snowman is the simplest way to think about that. But what is a snowman really? You could ask one. It doesn't snow here too often though, so it doesn't help you. A snowman is a closed voicing root position version of a chord. And what you glean from a snowman um, is closed voicing, essentially. And what you also notice is that all the chord tones are as close together as they can possibly be. So for in this particular case, you have a C, you have an E, and you have a G. This constitutes a C major triad. And these are as closely spaced as you can possibly have them. There's no chord tone in between these two notes that you can't like fit in another note in between these two notes. They're as close together as they could possibly be. Can you hear me playing piano right now? Can you hear that? Okay, cool. Yeah. Every time I see this chat, I just want to see what, what people are saying. Oh, cool. Someone said, yep, and yeah. All right, awesome. Um, OK, so this is a closed voicing 
chord. This one right here, though, is open voicing, because as you can clearly see already, well, assuming that you agree that this is a C major chord, which you don't necessarily have to, um, you can see that already there's a chord tone that has not been inserted in the slot where you would have expected it to be if this were a closed voicing chord. So this is an open voicing chord, OK? Hopefully that makes sense. In fact, does that make sense? Give me a yes or a no. Yes. I love this. Awesome. OK, awesome. Great. Um, I got no no's here. Don't be shy. OK. Oh, I, I just gave myself. I just gave a no. Sorry. That was my bad. Um, OK, great. So then how do you figure out what type of chord this is? Well, what you have to do is ultimately have to make a snowman out of this. You basically have to find the closed voicing root position version of this chord in order to actually know what chord it is with perfect certainty. So the way you do that is there's multifold ways to do this. One way is by just taking the top note. This is a method uh, introduced by Connor Frankston, part of our peanut gallery right here. Yeah, there's Connor, he's waving. And one way is just by repeatedly, well, first, I'm just going to duplicate this chord. The first half of the measure is the is basically the original chord. The second half of the chord is the chord that we're just going to basically do gymnastics on in order to ultimately, hopefully, get to this chord right here. So one way you can do it is you can take the top note, bring it down an octave. Look at that, bam. Wait, before I do this, actually, remove all the redundancies. So there are four notes here, but so only three unique notes. Yes, is that tape? If you, um, oh, sorry. if you just keep on moving it down, like you could have it so that when a note gets squished onto a note that is already there, they just kind of squish together and it still works. True. You don't necessarily have to get rid of the redundancies. That's actually true. So let's do it that way. So if we see the only problem that's going to make it harder in software to see this is because this is on two stabs, but I can actually show you what it would be like. So if I bring this down an octave, I'm just going to put it in the bass clef stack. I brought this down an octave and magically it goes to the bass clef. I bring this note down an octave. It goes down an octave. Bam. I bring this note down an octave. Look at that. It shows that these two notes are redundant. Blap. OK, look at that. Just like that. Great, Connor. Great suggestion. Um, just like that, you see all of a sudden the closed voicing root position version of the chord. But I should say something. Um, you're not always going to find the closed voicing root position version of the chord. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're absolutely going to find the closed voicing root position version of the chord by doing this. I stand by what I just said. Here's the next step you got to do. You got to compare the bass note of the chord you're trying to check, that note right there, against the root of the closed voicing root position version of the chord. In this particular case, they're the same exact notes, which means that this open voicing chord is actually a root position. Um. Uh, yeah. I have a question. So in the method that you just showed us, the top note keeps changing that we bring down an octave, right? It's not the same note that we keep bringing down. Yeah, the top note keeps changing. So exactly. Because like what we had, we, we started with this, right? This was the top note. Uh, we bring this down an octave, blap, right? We bring this down an octave. Oh, I can't do that. It's OK. You bring this down an octave, black, right? Now this is the new top note. Bring this down an octave. Well, now you see a snowman. You remove the redundancy at the end, and okay. you're set. So in this particular situation, you can clearly see that the base note of the core that we're trying to check, I guess, whoops, didn't need to do that. Chord, we are, <laughs> should I make a stupid acronym for this? Probably not. We are trying to check, or the 
the Siwatk. No, I won't. I won't keep that acronym. Okay, so this is the chord we're trying to check, and the base note of the chord we're trying to check check matches the base note of the the snowman, the closed voicing root position version of the chord. So this happens to be in root position. So if I actually put Roman numerals here, or actually if I just put a chord symbol here, this would be a C major chord. No, let me put a, let's pretend we're in C major, okay? So C major, what Roman numeral would this be? Well, let's find out. So in C major, this would be a one chord and it's in root position. So we don't need something like this. No, we do not. We just leave it like this. Just like this is also a one chord, this is also a one chord. So notice something. Open position, Roman numerals do not care about whether something is an open voicing, sorry, open position or closed position. Roman numerals do not care about that. They don't encode that information. The only way you can encode that, the only way you can tell, test that information is by actually looking at the chord and seeing uh, that, it, seeing that, okay? So let me actually, for the sake of uh, layout stuff, I know this is always scintillating when I do stuff like this. I'm just going to change the page size really quickly so we have a more sensible staff thing. Great. Okay. Blap. All right. So let's try another one. So here, we're still in the key of C major. Let's just, let's just give, it, give it that, okay? Whoa, cool. I like it. Okay, so now this becomes the chord we were trying to check. Okay, ooh, doesn't like that. This becomes the chord we're trying to check. Okay, so what we have to do is we'll, we'll create a copy of it and we're gonna use Connor's method, okay? CM for short, because I like abbreviations, Connor's method. What we're going to do is we're going to take this top note and we're going to bring it down an octave. Okay, so if I bring it down an octave, what happens? It, this happens. Okay, so that's a redundancy. Doesn't matter. We're going to take this note and we're going to bring it down an octave. Okay, I'm going to delete it now. Okay, I'm going to delete this redundancy because we don't need it, right? I'm going to take this top note because it's still not a snowman bring it down an octave and look at that. We have ourselves a closed voicing root position version of the chord. Okay, we have one of those. Okay, so now what you gotta do is you gotta check the base note of the chord we we're trying to check against the bottom note of the snowman. It turns out that this note right here in the chord that we're trying to check is the second note of the snowman. If this note were the first note of the snowman, if this note, this bottom note in the chord we're trying to check was the first note of the snowman, that would be root position. But since it's the second note of the snowman, it is first inversion. So this open voice and chord is in first inversion. Please ask questions if you have any questions. Uh, participants, yes or no? Do you get it? I'm confused. Can you uh, repeat what you said? Sure, absolutely. Um, I'll start from beginning. So. Who, who, was, who just asked the question? Me. Uh, it, are you, uh, who, who is me? Me, Max. Oh, Max Igu? Yeah. Okay, I just remembered your last name. I can't see you. For some reason, normally people who chat, they come, they get pushed to the top, but you're somewhere down deep in the conversation, so I can't find. Oh, you know what? I, I just realized why. Um, I, I, oh, I see you now. I'm sorry, Max. Great. What, so, um, what particular aspect of this would you like me to go over again? Or what, what's confusing you? 
How do you know it's an inversion? Okay, how do I know it's an inversion? So this is how I know it's an inversion. So um, this is a root position triad. It's a snowman, right? If I, if, okay, so here's the thing. Um, this is a closed voicing first inversion triad right here. You can, you can see that, right? When we reduced this to closed position, we got, when we, got, when we reduced this to closed voicing root position, we got this. You agree, right? Yeah. Okay. But then here's the thing. The bottom note of the chord, the bass note of the chord determines the inversion. So there are only three pitches here. It's like a game of Scrabble. You can rearrange the letters however you want. So right here in this particular grab bag of Scrabble, we have B, D, G. Uh, well, B, G, D, G from bottom to top, right? Okay. The only thing that really determines inversion is the bottom note. This letter right here, the B. So what you basically have to find out is this B, you have to find out where this B is in the root position version of the chord. So if the bass note is the second note of this closed voicing chord, it's first inversion. If the bass note is the third note of, of the root position chord, it's in second inversion. If the bass note is the first note of the closed voicing root position version of the chord, it's in root position. Um, in other words, the bottom note of the chord really tells you what inversion you're in. The bottom note of this chord is B, correct? Where does B fit into this chord? It's the second note, which means we, by definition, we're in first inversion. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, sorry, were you saying something still? I could. Sorry, yeah, it's good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah. So that's an operative feature. And I think I have this on one note. Let me just check to see where I put it, because this will be a good check, chance to check where I put things. So I segregated this stuff into categories. So closed point position. OK, so I have a big spiel here. Um, I might have to reorganize this in a different way. You guys have never seen the show Clarissa Explains It All, so this reference didn't uh, compute with you guys. Um, it's too bad. Um, uh, I have it here somewhere. Sorry. This might be fun or extremely tedious to see me look through this right now. Oh, yeah. It's, it's over here. I should probably reprint this. Um, I'll, I'll get to you, Brosnan, really quickly. Um, yeah, so basically, it's in this seventh chord's finding position diagram. If the bottom note of the chord is the second note, we're in first inversion. If the bottom note of the chord is the third note of the snowman, it's second inversion. If the bottom note is the third, fourth note of the closed voice and chord, we're in third inversion. Um, Gabriel and Brosnan raised their hand. Brosnan, what, you go first. So um, I've tried to open. Like I have one note on my desktop on my computer, um, and I've tried to use your little link on on Canvas to open it on my computer, but I can't seem to. I can't figure out how to open it on my desktop. Oh, okay, I think it might have to do with this. Uh, this is like a tedious feature of OneNote. What is your your? Uh, sorry. Oh gosh. Um, okay. This is, a, this is such a tedious um, thing. Uh, give me a second. Apply. Anyone with the link can view. What is your email, Brosnan? It's it's B L R O D. B B L R O D. This one. Okay. Uh, I can't. Is your behind? It's behind you. <laughs> oh, it's behind me. Oh, I thought yeah. I I thought I muted. Uh, I think you just have to move my window. We need a, we, there's an E between the B and the L. 
Oh, okay. B, oh, okay. B Elrod at UC. Okay, there we go. There See if are. this works. There used to be a way you could add a bunch of emails in, but it's so obnoxious. You can't like add, you have to like manually add in each email. Unfortunately. Uh, so I'll see if I can do that. There's luckily there's only like 50 students in the class. Someone else raised their hand. Who else raised their hand? Uh, that was me. Uh, I just have a question with like finding like finding the chords from like an open position. Uh huh. So like here you mentioned like moving octaves, but then like one method I do is like grabbing all the letters and then rearranging them such that they're thirds apart. Is that also a viable that, method? That's a great way to do it. So that we can call that Gabriel's method. So there's Connor's method and there's Gabriel's method. And uh, the good thing about the Gabriel method is if you're, if you're familiar with alphabet soup, I guess they're both interrelated in some way, but if you're familiar with alphabet soup and you can quickly find thirds, you can quickly rearrange them things in terms of the thirds. So for instance, if I do this, for instance, if I give you a random letter, so using Gabriel's method, this is agnostic to any position on the staff, and I go F, G, B, D, and you see thirds. You might, you, you basically, the goal of this game is to string together three thirds. So G, a third above G is B, ah, we win. A third above B is D, we win again. A third above D is F, we win again, okay? So in practice, Let's examine this a little bit. Okay. Sorry, a little OCD about having my things laid out correctly. So one thing you can do in this situation is by actually well, you basically have to find third relationships. So if you find that there's a third above this note, well, here's the thing. You have to create a string of thirds. So if you see a B right here and you see a third above B is a D, then you you found part of the, the snowman. That's great. Now, either underneath this third or above this third, there's another third. So Underneath this B, there happens to be a G. Great. So actually, it starts with G. G, B, a third above B is D. A third above D happens to be F. Is that the method you were using, Gabriel? Uh, yes. Yes, and that is totally valid. Um, in fact, when you're processing this stuff in real time, you're going to probably in encounter multiple ways of, of, of processing this data. It's, it's helpful to have multiple strategies, depending on your mood or depending on what you're seeing. If you have different ways to approach this, the, the stronger well off you will be. Um, another kind of thing, another, well, I'll just leave it at that. That's, that's the method I was using before Connor's method or before that was the method I was, I was explaining before then, but both of those methods are totally valid. Basically find a string of thirds, you basically have to create a chain of thirds or you just keep taking the top note and bringing it down an octave. I have a question. Sure. So you said, look at the, the root note, like uh, what inversion it is. Uh huh. But what happens if it's a slash chord, like it's C major over E or something like that? Oh, okay. We're talking about chords that we haven't learned yet, which I'm happy to do because we're going to learn about this quarter. I'm determined. Um, so if you have a C major over E, oh wait, actually a slash, okay, well, that's not a great application. Okay, that's a specific type of slash chord. I haven't explained what slash chords are yet. But C major over E is just a way to represent a C major chord such that it, it's an inversion where E is the bottom note. So for instance, all that is, I'll just show you. I'll show you what a slash chord is. I'll show you a simple version of a slash chord really quickly. Okay. Oh, uh, whoops, sorry. Okay. So this one right here is a C major chord. This is this chord symbol for a major chord. This is a C major chord over the E bass note. 
So what a slash chord is, is it basically, um, it, it can have two, there's two varieties to a slash chord. One variety is that you have a bass note. So basically what you have, I'll tell you what a slash chord is. There's a, the chord is in the numerator, the triad or the chord is in the numerator and a bass note is in the denominator. And there's two types of slash chords. One slash chord is where the bass note is in the chord that's in the numerator. The other type of slash chord is where the bass chord is not, bass note is not in the chord that's in the numerator. But in this particular example that uh, Max gave me, it's a C major chord over E. This E is actually in the chord that's in the numerator. So really this is just a way of representing inversion. It's basically saying, draw me a C major chord, but the bass note has to be E. Does that make sense? Sorry, my, my computer just died, so I, I really just, and I had to just plug it in, so I really did not hear any of that. Oh, okay, well, I'll explain it again, because it, it is worth going over again. Because I was wondering where you were, um, yeah. because I saw you disappear. Great, um, so this is a C major chord. Now, a slash chord can have two varieties. I'll explain what a slash chord is again. So a slash chord is, has two components. It has a numerator and a denominator. The, a numerator is the top, right? A denominator is the bottom, am I correct? Okay, great. So the numerator of a, a slash chord is actually a chord. It's actually like a three or four note chord. The denominator is a bass note, okay? So it's a C major chord where the E is a bass note. Now there's actually two types of slash chords. One situation, one type of slash chord is where the bass note is actually in the chord that's in the numerator. So in this situation, that's this type. This E is actually in the chord that's in the numerator, which is a C major chord. It's one of the notes that fits into that chord. The other case is when there's like a slash chord where you see a note in the denominator that's not in the chord, that's in the numerator, okay? But the example you gave me was a C major over E. In that situation, it's just, an, it's just a C major chord where E is the bass note, and that by definition is just a first inversion because of this principle. But isn't it first inversion? Like, so I'm confused. This is first inversion. They're, they're the same thing. This is synonymous. C major over E is synonymous with first inversion. It's just, it's just the chord symbol way of representing it instead of the, um, uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. This is first inversion. This is the Roman numeral way of writing it, and this is the chord symbol way of writing it. Okay, so if you, <clears throat> so like say in the bass clef, mm -hmm. if you, so you say the like C major, right, over like what you said, like F, mm -hmm. right? And then you put an F, but that would still, you would write that as C major over F. Like it would, it would, it would be hard to Hi. use your um, method. I don't know. I feel like that would be confusing, you know, to, if, well, if, this they, is, okay. if you didn't know it was over F, if, if that makes sense. Well, I get, I should say that these types of slash chords are treated totally differently. Um, if, if the, if the denominator note is not in the numerator chord, then this is a totally different process. Like this is a chord we haven't studied yet. But if the denominator note is in the numerator chord, then that's, to that's just a, a way of representing inversion, if that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Of course, yeah. And eventually we'll talk about other slash chords and things like that. I guess we are, there are some people in the chat trying to say stuff. Uh, was it because he added your email? Oh, update. I got notebook to open a desktop as to, oh yeah, Kayla, uh, uh, a Brosnan. Uh, did you click the link? Is that how? Um, well, not actually. Okay. I went on to my, I opened up my OneNote and made sure that I was logged in with my school email. Um, oh, okay. It's probably because, it's, yeah, it's probably because I gave you direct permission. So what I'll do is I'll actually go in, it's going to take a I second, had, but I'll go in and add everyone's school email to OneNote. I had to go in here and click and choose your notebook. I, it might be because you shared it with me, but I'm not sure. I bet you it is because Kayla doesn't seem to still have access, but it, se it seems like a too much of a coincidence for you to have gotten that. <laughs> that Probably. So wonderful. Um, guys, I think that's good for class. If you want, I'll be just hanging around here for office hours. I know, haha, funny virtual office hours, but 
Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. I'll be over here. I'm just checking out who's here. Uh, oh, look, a bunch of familiar faces. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, just hang in there, guys. I know it's uh, trying times we're living in, but uh, new faces, some new faces. I'm just looking through and seeing who you are. There's some people I don't recognize. Oh, we uh, can. Are we good to go? Yeah, you guys are good to go. Okay. Hey, professor. Yeah, what's up? I made this dope song. Oh, really? Who? Who? who oh, bro, oh, is this Maxwell? Yeah, you want to play it? Dude, check that out. Do you hear it? Uh, I can't hear it. Why don't I stop sharing? And you, so okay. When you share your screen, uh, make sure you check uh, share computer audio as well. Yeah, it's in the bottom left hand side. Make sure you check that box. Oh, you're Isn't playing it. Oh, you're playing it through. <laughs> your, <laughs> wait, are you playing it through your phone? I can't. I couldn't hear it. Actually. Yeah, I was playing it through my phone. Sorry. Oh, play play it again. Play it again. Nope, huh? I could, oh, wait, I couldn't. I couldn't hear it. Still, I, I'm. I really want to hear it. Are you? Are you left? At, you know what? I'm going to unmute you so that the space bar situation doesn't. Oh, actually, play it. Play it again. <laughs> hear it? I hear some notes and then it breaks up. It's for Elise. I'm just messing. With oh, you. okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to have some oh, fun. Oh yeah, I heard a little bit of it. I heard. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Yeah, I heard, but for some I reason know. I couldn't hear the other other Wait. notes. Academic guitar, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, guys, very very good. And uh, uh, if anyone else has any dope songs to share, I'm here. I'm all ears. I have a question, actually. Sure. I'm supposed to do. Okay, so. I'm in a little singing group and I'm supposed to do a very, or help with a very introductory uh, like crash course on music theory. And it's supposed to happen over the course of like two sessions, like a total of four hours. What stuff do you recommend I should like focus on trying to, especially for singers, what, 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 what might be useful for them to know about music theory? Oh, for singers? Um, I would say, um... I guess I'll share my screen again. I would say like getting a singer to start learning how to read notation is a good thing. Um, like learn, like having them associate, uh, let's see, I think I have this, like the, the relationship of notes on the piano staff, like the fact that a scale, like a step moves up a note on the piano and just like knowing a piano scale pretty well and then knowing that a note that moves up on the staff is like a, a higher note in the scale I'd say like learning how to just like sing a scale because then ultimately if they know how to sing a scale, then it's just one step removed from being able to basically do solfege. Or if they don't want to necessarily learn solfege, they can just, um, they can basically do this. I can show you a quick example. So if they have this, if they know how to do this, then it's not so far removed for them to, ooh, sorry, this is, there's always an advantage and a disadvantage to a layout. <laughs> yeah. um, so if they know how to do this, it's not so far removed that they know how to do, right? Right, yeah. So I would say like, just learn a major scale is a great starting point. And then, um, and then eventually, you know, you can teach them how to like skip notes and like, oh, what happens if I don't actually play this note? Well, imagine this note, and then you'll eventually get to this note. So that's something you could suggest to them. But is, is the context that they're actually supposed to learn music theory? Um, yeah, it's, I mean, like I said, it's only a, it's only a crash course, uh, but it is so that they have some more of the building blocks for like, I don't know, like context of what a seventh is and kind of like, I, I think, I think that, I think the path that you were spelling out is probably a good way to go though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's so much to say. Um, like I'll probably talk about stuff like 
the different like what changes between this um, a minor and a major chord and that sort of thing like um, like how the intervals play differently there. Um, but, sure. Yeah, just yeah. wanted to hear your two cents. Yeah, and you can also you can also um, whoops, oh, whoops, sorry. You could also like bring to their attention that you know the the, the idea that like depending on which scale degree you are, you have different triads. Um, so, and then that's a good way to teach major and minor chords as well. Or yeah. diminished chords, I guess, as well. Sure. But yeah, that's exciting. I'm glad that you're putting it to the test. There's, there's no better <laughs> way to learn than to teach. I tell you. I agree. This. That's great. All right. Hey, Professor. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yeah, how are you doing? Good, how are you? This Please. is Victor. I don't know if you remember me from last quarter. Oh, yeah. You were actually the guy who used Flat.io. Yeah, okay. So I emailed you earlier today, or and also yesterday. Oh, okay. And um, it was regarding like the lab class and how it kind of conflicted with this lecture. Oh, okay. Um, but anyway, I had the lab class today for the first time, and... um. I think I can make it work, like, because on paper it's, it like conflicts, but I'm pretty sure it will always end before this lecture starts. So I'll try to make it on time every time. Okay, that's that's wonderful. Yeah, and I, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm glad it's it's great that you communicated that with me. And, you know, there are going to be circumstances where I'm going to have to be more lenient, but it's good. Okay. It, I recommend you come because it'll it'll help for sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Cool. Have a good one. Bye bye. See you later. All right. Oh, Brosnan, what's up? I'm just chilling here. Did everyone else leave? No, it's just you and Connor. Okay, what's up, Connor? <laughs> hey, Nicole. Hey, Brosnan. What's up? How you doing? Pretty, Pretty chill. Good. I uh, had the opportunity to do a little bit of arranging in my spare time during the break. It was fun. I should tell you, man, I actually really like those recommendations, those listening recommendations you gave me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you got around to them. Nice. Really good stuff. Yeah, Beautiful. Be really, really well done. Yeah, the, the um, vocal spectrum is really quite an amazing barbershop group. Oh, I think I, I might have only listened to the... Um, well, I think I listen to both, but I, the more, what I remember oh, more folk, clearly... The folk songs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That one guy, I think. The Peter Hans. Yeah, he, yes. was, he was great. Yeah, yeah I love I'm, him. I'm sad to say that I think the Jacob Collier concert is, is canceled until further notice. Yeah, I'm probably. I was thinking about even going. I, have, I, haven't, I don't go to many concerts in general, but uh, that's definitely one I would have considered. Yeah, I think I think it's actually official. He he can't see the entire tour is canceled, which isn't surprising. It would it would have been April sixteenth, and with the amount of, you know, he, he his his performance strat his style is very much interactive with the audience and like having mm -hmm. people huddle together and sing together, and it's just the Corona Fest. So yeah, mm -hmm. I remember when I went to his concert, he had everyone sit on like Indian style on the ground. <laughs> so he has like amazing power over the audience and um, it's very close knit, but yeah, too bad. What, well, I think that I bought the ticket, so I think he, it should be valid for the next time it comes around, hopefully. I'm wondering if we'll get an, if we'll get a, in my room too, <laughs> that would be fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, it's interesting now that he's going more of the live route and, oh, sorry, yeah. the multi, uh, the actual full band route. But uh, I'm sure, I mean, I, I'm sure the man can't contain himself and he'll continue doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so. What kind of stuff is that? Oh, Jacob Collier? Um, yeah. Really amazing stuff. Like I, when I first heard of him, um, I was blown away. Yeah, because he, do, he does like real, like he started out what I, actually my favorite thing that he does is like he, his, his like solo one man band, or like acapella arrangements of stuff. But he also plays like all the, like every instrument, and oh, really? it's it's really like well done. Like he doesn't use auto tune, and he does like twenty part harmony. Um, That's pretty crazy. It's it's like yeah, it's 
it's insanely and, insanely well done and he's like just a kid so it's, just, it's he's like he's like a mozart and um, i see so he's very uh, and he's a nice guy like i met him and he you know he's he's just a very friendly person i gave him a hug i gave him two hugs and he's just <laughs> a nice guy <laughs> so um yeah there's a picture on the internet of me hanging out like my nose got in the picture so like <laughs> technically in a picture with him and like quincy hey. jones and Hans zimmer what's his name oh that's oh, cool you, do you meet Hans zimmer i i basically i was talking with him but he was talking at a group of people like me okay. and two other people and he was looking at me while i was talking but i never got to respond so like basically i was in a he was talking and he looked at me and he was talking to me but then i like never like I was too like worried about what to say. I got gotcha. you. back, and then the other person just kept talking. But I actually do. We'll send you an email with my favorite uh, Jacob Collier stuff. I actually have an email like typed up. Um, oh really? Okay, sweet. I, well, of some of the of some of the because I personally I just like his. I just really I was in an acapella group, so I really like solo acapella singing, and I think that's like my favorite thing that he's um, that he's done. Um, so actually, the stuff that he did when he was like 15 is still like my favorite stuff. Um, hmm. Hey man, I see you have all those. Uh, got some guitars and a mandolin back there. Oh yeah, in fact. Do, yeah. <laughs> there's actually uh, there's a couple of violins over here. There's one viol. Oh, there's one violin oh, that's actually. I know. That, yeah, I got your recent email that you're a violin player, and one of those is actually tuned down, and it's it's a, it's. It has special strings, so it's cello. It sounds like a cello. Oh, whoa, that's really cool. That's incredible. Kind of like a viola, but like fatter strings. Yeah, so it's an okay. it's actually a viola that's the same size as a violin, but with strings that are an octave lower, so it's a cello. I see. So it's that's um, cool. It's cool. So I did some. Wait, that sounds so sick, dude. What? It's really cool, man. It's like the action. It's a little hard to to get yeah. um, to excite the string for the low notes, mm -hmm. but it's like I've done some multi-tracking where I've recorded it, mm -hmm. and it's like it sounds it sounds like a full like string quartet. That's really cool. It's super oh, man. fun, man. Super fun. Dang. How how did you even like come upon that? Um, I came upon that through. That's a great question. I'm not exactly sure how I came upon that. It's, but once I came upon it, I, um, I, I, yeah, I, I can't remember. I think I saw like a video on it and I was like, wow, this is great. If I can actually, because I play violin, I was never first or second chair like you were, but I played it in middle school because I like was forced to play an instrument. And I, I still remember it. I'm, I don't have good technique, but it's like, I was like, man, if I can apply, adapt these violin fingerings to mm -hmm. also play low notes, and I like harmonizing things, and I love writing for strings, then it would be like something I could just add to my arsenal. Yeah. Do you have to do like wider fingering for that stuff? How does that work? I don't think you would. Would you have to? I don't no. think so. No, yeah, because it's, it's the same length. It's just fatter. And yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's just a little, yeah, it's just the low strings, especially it would have been better if I got an actual viola um, mm -hmm. that's like a full size because the ro low strings would have actually been excited, uh, correctly. Cause right mm -hmm. now you have to really like dig mm -hmm. to get the low, like the low string that even sounds. Do you have like a bigger bow? I actually like... do have a bigger bow. Okay. Um, and it works better than the standard violin bow. Mm -hmm. Um, like a cello bow actually is, it works better. Yeah, for sure. That's really cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. If you're, that's, Sounds like something you'd, you'd enjoy for sure. Yeah, definitely. That'd be awesome. I really like the low sounds and like, I never, I mean, cello sounds really cool. I know I saw one of your videos where you were playing some cello. Right? Oh, I was playing, I think I was playing upright bass. Um, oh, really? Oh, snap. That's what, okay. This thing right here, yeah, my so friend. You play a bass too. Well, he got basically, he like let me, oh, he was borrowing that from his like, church or something or you know mm -hmm. his, he was borrowing that from his friend who was borrowing that from his church and my uh -huh. friend who was borrowing it could like never could not use it anymore so he's like hey why don't you borrow this so i've just been holding on to it for like a year and i'm like wow and i love bass because it's the same you probably know this but it's the same strings as the four bottom strings as a guitar and uh <clears throat> and if you like walking bass lines and stuff i've always been playing walking bass lines on piano from jazz and like you know playing a bunch of bach and things like that <laughs> So it was. It wasn't. 
it was very gratifying to like learn uh, bass. And it's actually the same exact fingering on upright bass. It's just, mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's kind of versatile to learn uh, one because then you basically get better at guitar and you get better at upright bass as well. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So yeah, it's, um, it's fun. Yeah, I've just been, and then the other room, this is my tracking room. And the other room is actually the control room, which actually has like a drum kit and has a piano. And, um, and it's got, uh, basically, I, I'm trying, it's kind of like a little makeshift home studio. And mm -hmm. um, I've got a console here and I, I, it's like a recording interface, basically. And uh, just trying to have a little recording studio. I'm living with my parents right now, but eventually I would port this all. And if I, if, you know, I'm saving up money, eventually if I ever built a house or had, a, had the agency to actually build a studio in my house, I would, I would be like halfway there. So that's, that's the goal at least. Nice. Yeah, man. That sounds like a great goal. <laughs> so like you play all these instruments, what instruments do you play? Like as a list? I mean, I got like piano, you do singing, bass, guitar, man, mandolin, I, violin. I will say I play all the, I will give you a huge disclaimer, man. I definitely play, I definitely use recording magic and video magic and recording magic when I'm recording these things. <laughs> I, there are some instruments that I know how to play much better than other mm -hmm. instruments. Like I definitely, like when I'm like recording guitar, I do that like a thousand times and then I record okay. it. And then mm -hmm. I have like a video to like make it interesting to look at, but really like okay. I have recorded it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, I, I guess my niece is actually, she's learning flute in school and sort of, the, you know, she, the way these relationships work, I found is that she doesn't let me teach her anything. So like, this is my way by, by letting her teach me, it's sort of like a way for me to teach her a little bit. So I've been kind of learning flute a little bit with her. And that's cool. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. I'm, ha I'm having, yeah, I'm looking forward to having more time because last summer is when I really was exploring all these and, and making videos and things like that. So mm -hmm. Um, now it's basically summer again, kind of in some ways. Mm. Yeah. Like a really long summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh. So yeah, it's been, um, yeah, can't, can't complain, but yeah, you played, you played, you said that you played violin and guitar and guitar. Did, did you say that? Oh, okay. No, no, no. I just play in a, in a band. So I play oh, keyboard play in, a in a band. Oh, cool. But, um, no. And honestly, uh, my violin skills have gotten really rusty, so I'm sure I do. You pick it up. I mean, if if you were first or second chair, I'm sure you and you played in high school. I'm sure you would pick it up. It would just come right back. Yeah, I'd hope so. <laughs> you still I have played the violin? occasionally. Oh, you, oh yeah. yeah, I left it in La Jolla. Actually, I need to drive down there and grab some stuff because I'm back with my parents too. So. Where, where's home for you? Uh, your Belinda. Oh, okay, like nice. Orange County. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did my undergrad in Irvine, so not too far. Oh yeah, yeah, nice. That's cool. Yeah, so that's cool, man. Yeah, I, I, uh, I do like that area. I, I, it's your Belinda is kind of like near uh, Huntington Beach and uh, those places, right? Yeah, kind of. It's like twenty minutes away, Huntington. Maybe a little bit more. I don't know. Oh um, well, yeah, I used to do a lot of teaching there actually that's like where all my students were like they were all in Huntington basically and oh, really? uh, but I just sort of I associate all those areas kind of together um, mm -hmm. yeah they're all basically the same <laughs> so, like suburbia yeah. suburbia <laughs> a lot of strip malls and um, yeah it's cool cool place mm -hmm. I like it for sure uh, how did uh, your meeting so, go with, did you, did you get a chance to schedule a meeting with Joe? No, not yet. No, I sent him an email and it was three days ago. I kind of was delayed sending him those emails. I've been kind of busy. It's been kind of weird here. Um, but I said we should chat through Zoom sometime. And I asked him what times work for him that I'm available most days. Oh, okay. I sent him, okay. sent him another little thing, the same one I, I sent you or showed oh, you before. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's cool, man. I feel like so. there's good uh, good things that can come out of that. It's just, just for networking, like in case, I mean, obviously, 
you're, uh, there's no obligation to, but it's just cool to, in terms of getting exposed. Because I forgot that he actually did have a joint uh, neuroscience music masters. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so I'll have to look into that. Cause like, if you can just make a masters like that, doing math and music would be really interesting. And yeah, I think that would be great if I could do that. So yeah, thank you for what's up. Oh no, sorry. Of course, I no, sorry. I thought I thought I heard Brosnan say something. But oh yeah, for sure. Like, is this is this Joe Bigum? Uh, Joe Bigum. What about? I don't know who that is. No, okay, never mind. I was just curious who the who the Joe was. <laughs> oh, Joe Joe Waters. He's he's the um, composition coordinator at San Diego State University. Huh? Okay. So um. So basically, Connor was interested in in applying. I was I was in, as a as a master student. Um, and I was like, you know, that's great. Um, it, music, it, 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 at, at SDSU at least they have this attitude where they're not like really stringent on having like an undergrad in music before you get a master's in music. Mm, so, nice. uh, so it's really cool um, if that's something you're interested in as well, so. Yeah, I don't know, it's, it, it's, it's, see I'm thinking about taking the two series, but the problem is that I understand that is a little, gonna involve some keyboard stuff and I just yes. don't know how committed I can be to actually putting in the proper amount of time on the keyboard. Like I know if I, I know that when I do put in the time, it'll, it turns out fine, especially with the performance quizzes. Um, but like, mm. I just don't know if I can do it to the level that I anticipate like 2K being or something like that. Yeah. Um, I've TA the two series for an entire year and some. And then some, and I found it to be pretty. Uh, uh, well, I don't know about the 2K, but I know for the two series proper, um, there wasn't at least the sections that I sit, held. There wasn't that much keyboard in it at all. Um, but I guess it varies depending on the, the instructors. It's amazing how different each of these classes is too, because like I remember when I was teaching the two series one year, like they like got to secondary dominance at like the end of the two series, but we're going to get to that like at the end of the one series. Mm. So it's like, it's strange. Mm. I've also had, yeah, I don't, it's, it'll be interesting to see. I hope, I don't know. I, who knows? I might even teach two series. I'll ask them because it'd be kind of cool to have a continuity in that regard. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would do it like, oh, well, it says, okay. I see here where I was confused. It says that, music majors must be concurrently rolled in 2AK, 2BK, 2CK. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Then that would be more of a um, keyboard-heavy emphasis, for sure. But I'm not a music major, so I probably won't be required. Although the course is intended for music majors. I, I don't know, because the, the thing is, I'm considering about maybe doing a minor in music, since it both interests me and I'm already started on it. Um, but you need the two series as well as some other upper, upper division stuff. Um, so, I don't know. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I, I recommend you taking the two series if that's something you're interested in. And if you're interested in minoring in music, then there's more power to you. The 101 series is cool too because then you learn counterpoint and you learn some other things as well. Um, but uh, what year are you? I'm a second year. Okay. What's your major currently? <laughs> Math, mathematics. Oh, cool. So yes. you know nice. Connor. You guys are in the same major. Yeah. Are we? Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's what do you what's your current math class? Um, I'm actually taking graph theory. This is the last math class I need to take. Is that I'm like actually a, I'm a That's sixth Wayne year. What's up? That's way in upper division. That's like one seventy something. I think so. Whoa, that was crazy. Saw some. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you can change uh, virtual backgrounds. So, for instance, Sorry, I have. My phone. my phone went to battery mode. So, there we go. Let's well, see. What classes are you taking right now for math? Uh, 181B, so Intro to Statistics 2, and 140B, which is okay. your analysis part yep. 2. Yeah, sweet. Wait. Yeah, I thought I saw you in, see, I was taking 
140A last quarter for a little bit, but then I realized that it was going to be a three sequence situation. So I just stuck with the 142. So yeah. I thought you were familiar and also you're in this class, but yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. 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 I think I may have seen you around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was his name? Who was the professor? It's like Stewart. Brandon. Yeah. Brandon Stewart. Yeah. Okay. He's a nice guy. And a yeah. good professor too. He's not, mm -hmm. it's like, he's not my favorite lecture style, but mm -hmm. I can get over it for the class. He's just, he does, uh, he does a lot for it in the way of considering what the students need. And I like, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Yeah. He seemed like a cool guy. I saw him around a few times. I saw him at the, um, what is it? The soda and swine bar. Oh, yeah. There. Yeah, we yeah. didn't really talk, but I just saw him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Did you ever, have you ever had a, because I've never used um, like the dining with a prof or coffee with a professor, <clears throat> but have you mm -hmm. ever had it used with you, Nako? Oh, um, I've never actually used it. I, I've never actually had it used, uh, actually, which is interesting. Um, but um, someone someone brought it up. Actually, no, I think I did get it used once. Nice. Um, have you have you done it often? No, I've never done it. Actually, I really ought to, have, but I have not yet. Now's the time. No, I'm just kidding. Now's not the yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Set up a Zoom a Zoom date and just have your own tea. You know? Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually doing that for uh, I'm doing that for my acapella group. We're making them listen in to our to our little summary of our of the like principal members because they had their we had, the principal members had their meeting, so we're making them listen in and we're calling it uh, tea time. <laughs> oh, that's so oh, funny, nice. man! Because actually, we have a Zoom group too, and we call it tea time. That's, well, that's awesome. <laughs> it might be a colloquial thing that just gained traction. Now it's just perhaps I don't um, know. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, it's um yeah, I mean I guess I have I have been advising students over Zoom, which has been which has been cool. It's been there's actually a way to get super high quality audio over Zoom. I'll show you an example. Um I'll share my screen and show you this thing that I that I use just for fun and you guys can see how well it works. Um it's it's this it, it's predicated on this thing called the audio movers listen to plugin. But if I actually uh, go to this and I log in, and then I, oh, my subscription expired. It's, it's really easy to extend the subscription to this software. I guess I won't show you today, but it's, it's so easy to do. Um, but then you bas I basically send you a link and then you, you hear like incredibly high quality audio through, you basically oh. open your browser and you, and you view the audio through the browser and it's substantially better. For certain classes, like a recording class that I'm like teaching, it's worth it. But for a class like this, I don't think it's necessary right. because it's it's more. Um, I guess I could have students go there, but I think I either have to like turn off my computer audio or students have to use this. I can't like do both, so um, it might be too confusing. But it's really not. It's just they they copy the link in either Chrome or Firefox and it's super high quality. I don't know why I brought that up. Um, I, I think I just want to share it. That's no, that's cool. I mean, I was actually going to ask you if you had. Um, cheap alt cheap um options that you kind of go to for recording audio because i'm trying to do uh a multi-track myself just for just to see just to see if i can do it for like little for like um for like a 20 measure arrangement that i did i want to see what it sounds like and you know see if it a human voice works well what and software what, what do you use i use music score i don't have yeah i mean i oh, but, obviously oh. can't afford the values but Oh, what what well I can hook you up with some educational software if you want. <laughs> for, um, well, for the um, for the multi track, I don't know if I can process the audio, but I was just gonna record each track individually, and then um, I think 